line that is from one of the Cubase internal sound sets. Let's just listen. Line that is from one of the Cubase internal sound sets. Let's just listen. Hello, and this is Harold again from the Hidden Room Studio. And this video is about how I use spectral layers to get rid of some noise in one of my videos. I made a video, my last video was about that vocal throw delay, and I did notice that I had some, some noise in it from one of the downlights here above me, though from the LED downlights that wasn't working properly. So somebody was asking if you can use spectral layers to get rid of that. So I was, yeah, well, Eric's experimenting with it. First of all, I never used Cubase for video, never used the video in Cubase. I didn't read the manual of spectral layers. I just experimented with it and it worked very good. So the first thing I used an empty arrangement and uh, dragged and dropped my video into my arrangement. Looks like this here. <clears throat> you see the audio track and you see the video track here on one track. Okay, so now let's listen to the noise that I have. I think it was somewhere in the beginning. I had some of the noise here, so I can turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. Demonstrate that. You heard it in the preview and now let me demonstrate how to get that. So the first thing I used is a vocal line that is from one of the Cubase internal sound sets. Let's just listen. So you can hear here that in the empty spaces between my voice there is a high noise, like a, a high tone coming from somewhere. It's not running while I play the music because then I muted my voice here. When I record the videos, for YouTube on OBS, I record them so that in the video file I will have two different audio tracks. One is the stereo track for my Cubase music and the other one is the mono track for my microphone. So after I loaded my video here, I just took the audio track and click on it, right click extensions and went here to spectral layers. So that can take a moment now uh, till it's preparing the data. It's on my other screen. Let me drag that over. It's here, full screen, so you see it. Now, where is the noise? This is the part where I am now, the part where I heard the noise and what you heard in the preview also. So when you go here and you zoom in, you see there's a thin lines here, a thin line at 4K. Uh, initially I thought that this is some kind of meter or something, but when you go and you change right here, the go to composite view and you change the color, it's more prominent that line here. So on the right side here you can zoom in like this and zoom in like this. Okay, you can see this line here at about 4K. So when the display, here on the right side, you can shift it a little bit more three-dimensional and then you can see that this is really a frequency that is prominent here. This is not some kind of metering or something that is in the spectral layers. So this is the display here. You can change the display on the right side. As I said before, I never worked with some like this before and I didn't even read the manual. So you can see that this 4K is going all through that. I think you need a very, very steep equalizer, very narrow band equalizer to get rid of that. So I went here and uh, here on the left side, you can see that cube here is in 3D perspective and then you can go to reset 3D. Now we're like this. And now let's zoom in more to that 4K. So like this here. And here, where is it? Oh, where is it? Here you are, here you are. Now you see it very prominent here. And so what I did is I used this here, that tool to make a rectangle around it. And then I played it. And I was surprised, I don't hear something because I'm here in the front. Uh, here you see the marker where the music is running is here, but when I go to play I don't hear anything 
And now, now you hear the noise. This is because when you use that rectangle, it seems like you're going into solo mode here. So what I did then is take this again, go here, internal sound sets, and um, go this. And I thought to myself, well, why not simply delete it? This is now going, you see on the right side, from 3940 hertz to 4040 hertz. This is now 80 hertz only wide, 80 hertz wide. So I did read the manual, so I just thought, well, why not delete it here? So just I put the lead here, and this here, now it's gone. Now let's go back and listen from here. A vocal line that is from one of the Cubase internal sound sets. Let's just listen. I'll be by and now you hear that it's gone. And so I thought, well, why not do that for the whole video here? You see here, this is the 4K, so I'm going here with a rectangle, like here, the complete thing, the complete part here, and I didn't care if there are some musical parts um, that I have here because I just wanted to experiment with it and I'm talking about 80 Hertz here, that's gone. So I simply deleted everything here. So it took a while, takes a moment until it's processing because this is a big file and now that 4000 Hz, that 4K is gone. And so it's gone all over the audio track. To select the channels, which is here, let's call it vocal. And I don't have the feeling that I'm missing something here like for the vocals or for the um, music that is playing. So the next step was very simple. This was just closing this here and going back to the beginning. Make here the range tool for the whole arrangement. Then go to um, export video. This is now what the video is called, the format. And you can also have real time export everything. And then I exported the video. Then I had a new video with the same video, with the same audio track, without the noise, and re uploaded it on YouTube. So this was very straightforward, very simple. Experiment with it. That's maybe some idea for you what you can do with the Spectral AS and very, very interesting tool. Again, Steinberg really got me with that because I never expected to have this in the new Cubis version 11 and it's a great tool. So simply try it out and hope this was helpful for you. See you next time. This has been Harold from Hidden Room Studio. Goodbye.